Welcome back if you need to start of Central. Well, the Union Cabinet has approved four semiconductor projects for Odisha, Punjab and Andhra Pradesh. Minister Ashwini Vaishnav had said that the proposals have been approved under the India Semiconductor Mission, which has an outlay of 76,000 crores to provide financial support for setting up chip facilities in the country. The cabinet has approved a chip packaging plant in Andhra Pradesh, which will be set up by Advanced System in Package Technologies Private Limited, with an investment of 468 crore rupees. Let's listen in to what Minister Ashwini Vaishnav said after the cabinet meeting. Char सेमीकंडक्टर प्रोजेक्ट्स अप्रूव हुए हैं दो उड़ीसा में एक पंजाब में और एक आंध्रा में आप जानते हैं कि 2022 में जब सेमीकंडक्टर मिशन लॉन्च हुआ माने प्रधानमंत्री जी का दूरदर्शी नेतृत्व है जिस के तहत उन्होंने एक लॉन्ग टर्म स्ट्रेटजी के तहत काम चालू किया और कंप्लीट इकोसिस्टम पे ध्यान देने का प्रधानमंत्री जी का हमेशा मार्गदर्शन रहा और साथ ही साथ जो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स मैन्युफैक्चरिंग अपनी बहुत अच्छी आगे बढ़ी है उससे भी सेमीकंडक्टर की डिमांड लगातार बढ़ती जा रही है तो अब कंप्लीट इकोसिस्टम डिज़ाइन वेफर वेफर फैब्रिकेशन पैकेजिंग मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ कंपोनेंट्स असेंबली टेस्टिंग फाइनल प्रोडक्शन हर चीज़ पे इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स के हर सेक्टर पर हर डायमेंशन पर काम चल रहा है And well, uh, let's uh, get on board Ashok uh, Chandak, who's the president of IESA, who's now joining in to weigh in on the issue. Uh, well, uh, hello, Mr. Uh, Chandak. Thank you so much for taking the time out Hi, and joining us. Uh, you know, first off, you know, cabinet has now approved four new semiconductor projects. Now, earlier six projects were already approved. How will this strengthen India's semiconductor ecosystem? Yeah, this is. Uh, uh, very landmark decision i would call because uh, the last year five projects were approved then recently we had popcorn hcl in uttar pradesh and these four projects so this is a continued momentum and acceleration of uh, the making semiconductors in the country and uh, the good thing about these four projects is they cater and they come from a different or a diverse technology perspectives and they are also going to be in a multiple states so this way uh, the make in india approach is expanding uh, to multiple states the new technologies are being done for example the one project is on a silicon carbide which is called as a compound semiconductor and there is going to be a huge demand for a compound semiconductor called the power electronics for the electric vehicles chargers and so forth multiple applications including the rf Uh, second uh, again in odisha a very innovative technology called the 3d uh, glass for the with the ceramic packaging uh, which is also unique and india does not have that actually so there is one uh, us based uh, company who is going to bring that technology to india uh, that's also going to be quite useful in applications such as the rf which is for a telecom followed by the automotive aerospace defense and others then we have one project for cdil uh, which is going to do the discrete semiconductors and they have been operating in india for a long time in punjab and in andhra pradesh we have the stip which does the uh, kind of osat which is outsourced uh, assembly test packaging so that way this is very important decision for a continued momentum of the semiconductor manufacturing in the country and with the multiple technologies being uh, involved at this stage in a multiple states so we are really applauding uh, the government of india's initiative the various policies are really paying a lot of dividend and uh, helping the industry to make the decision and good thing about it is also that uh, the states are participating uh, whole heartedly and that is what is visible now when the uh, both uh, odisha and andhra pradesh and the existing plant in punjab to be strengthened right also uh, talk to us about your expectations related to the ism2 uh, from the government in terms of uh, capital allocation and what should be the point of focus going forward see the uh, semiconductor manufacturing is a bit complex and it is uh, normally done as a supply chain multiple countries get involved 
So today, to produce any one chip, at least five countries are getting involved in multiple locations. And it's a long haul, actually. With one or two years, it doesn't make a difference much. So government understands this as the industry body when we discuss multiple times. They know that this is a long-term approach and government need to continue to support the extension of the program. So we are definitely expecting the next phase of the Semicon India program would be announced uh, very soon. Uh, even Honorable Minister has mentioned that they are working on this. We have to wait for the dates and other things, but it would come up. The uh, point is now, uh, having done uh, in the first phase, the next phase should definitely look at doing the entire supply chain for the manufacturing industry, because making the semiconductor wafers, foundries, and even OSATs, they need multiple supply chain components that includes the chemicals, the gases, the materials, the uh, cables, wires, the gold plating, and all those things. So we do expect that in the next uh, SIP, which called this uh, version two, uh, some of these would take uh, would be taken care. And in addition, another substantial outlay. Last time it was about ten billion dollars, similar or more, could also be allocated. But we have to wait for the government decision. I mean, from industry side, that's an ask and expectation which is there. Government do understand it's a long haul needs the continued nurturing and support. And with the current geopolitical situation, whatever is happening worldwide, as we all know, it is important that India really steps up our efforts into the manufacturing. Right. I just want to add to that, um, you know, we have been very good in a design. So a lot of uh, semiconductor design are done in country. In fact, almost 20% of the global design resources are residing in India, the Indian engineers. But we need to step up now to the manufacturing, which we call as a design-led manufacturing. Right. So even the design link incentive program is also progressing with regard to that. Sorry, right. go ahead. Right, right. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chandak, uh, one thing you mentioned, actually two things. One, the geopolitical upheaval that's, uh, uh, you know, underway. Also, you mentioned uh, the focus should be on the supply chain. Now, given the geopolitical upheavals that are disrupting a geopolitical balance, what is expected, uh, uh, what is the expected impact on the semicon industry? Uh, also, uh, the supply chain and so on. Now, uh, what is going to be the impact? See, one thing is very clear now. There are several countries, those have understood the importance of having their own semiconductor manufacturing. So many countries are looking at doing their own semiconductor manufacturing and they are providing the incentives and support. And with recent activity which is going on uh, in United States, particularly where industries are being asked or encouraged or guided to do the setup into their, uh, in the United States itself. So that makes the things a bit difficult for us. Uh, because uh, we do not have the right manufacturing technology. We are dependent on the global collaborations, either joint ventures or the global company setting up the plant. It makes it a bit difficult, actually, compared to, let's say, six months ago. But the, the good thing is about uh, India is uh, the government and the industry players are very committed and are going really extra mile to get this done. There are a couple of things I want to highlight here which is still our ammunition and our strength. One is, I told you already, that we have a very good design ecosystem. We need to utilize that to make the fabulous model, that is the design of the products in the country. And then we get it manufactured either in India or outside India. That way we own our own products and the brands. Uh, number two, the government support continues. That makes helps us to make the viability of the project while we import the technology and the necessary know-how. And number three, is uh, if there are more plants, those get approved, then we have a critical mass to develop that supply chain in-house in the country itself. There are several companies in India, those make the gases and the materials and chemicals, but they do not make it at the level of the purity, what is required for a semiconductor plants. So there would be opportunity for them to improve and uh, make their own uh, improvements in the processes or maybe get the process know-how from outside, but get that purity level of so-called 99.9999, uh, six nines or seven nines in that uh, number, uh, that would help out. Right. So it has become a bit difficult geopolitically today, but I see that we have still some ammunition and some strength, which could help us to tide over these challenges and continue our mission uh, particularly. Right. Mr. Chandak, also one of our challenges has been skilled talent. How can the industry and the government look at uh, filling that gap to be able to service global clients? 
So skilling is definitely important factor here, and I have to. I would like to uh, split the skilling topic into two areas. One is the design, and one is the manufacturing, as we were discussing. So on a design side, we are much better actually, because we have so many companies operating here, and they take the freshers and from engineering college grads, they train them in house. So that's really manageable. There is not much of an issue. What is happening is as the industry body and some of the industries we are working with several institutes in the country including the various IITs and also the AICT, where the course curriculums have been revised and getting updated with the additional inputs and modules that allows the uh, design-related programs and courses to be offered. That way, the engineering grads who are passing out, uh, they have this know-how. The challenge remains on the manufacturing side, because India did not have the major manufacturing industry so far. So our Talent availability for manufacturing plants is very, very limited or as good as nothing. And this is where we have to depend on multiple initiatives. Number one, the companies, those are setting up the plants, they would also send their engineering pool or the technicians to their collaborator outside of India for on-the-job training. Number two, this collaborator could also send some trainers to India. And number three, the industry body and institutes, we have started working on a program, which is on the workforce development. So we already did as a IESA and a SEMI. Uh, we have done uh, three such programs right now, one in IIT Guwahati, one in IIT Gandhinagar, one in IIT Bhuneshwar. And we are improving on this program now. So that way industry right. and institutes are now coming together to develop the very specialized training programs related to the manufacturing of the semiconductor, and which is going to be very important game changer, I would call. Right, Mr. Chandak, thank you so much for taking the time out and weighing in on, uh, on the new, this latest development. It's going to give a big boost to India's uh, uh, men, uh, semiconductor industry. And on that note, uh, we will let you go, Mr. Chandak. Thank you so much for taking the time out.